Hello and welcome to Minecraft education video tutorial. Last time we've looked at how to set up a shop and trading system in Minecraft education. If for some reason you've missed the first part of this tutorial, I will leave the link in the description. Today we're looking at how to make sure that there's only one student talking to a seller or a buyer. Last time we've established that the trading system only works if there's one student talking to the NPC at a time. And when I was building this world, I've tried several approaches. First, I put the yellow lines next to each seller and had students line up behind the line and wait for their turn. But students are students and they would cut in line and that will break the system. After the first unsuccessful attempt, I put in place an iron door that will shut after one player enters the shop. And this is what it looks like when a player enters the shop, the door will shut behind him or her. And when they're ready to leave the shop, the door will automatically open. And even with this method, we would still have students who would try and cut the line and enter the room with someone else. Like, for example, I had this student entering the shop, but the door is still not shut and I can try and sneak in and enter the room with this person. So what I've had to put in place is the third method of control. Like in this example, we have one player talking to the NPC and then another player is in the room and, and he or she tries to talk to the NPC. Both of the players will be teleported to the temporal prison where a sign will tell them that shops and banks can only work with one customer at a time and they need to wait for their turn and to get out of this temporary prison they need to push the lever which will teleport them back to the village so three methods of limiting number of players the first one was the yellow line and asking students to wait behind the line the second method was the door and the third method was teleporting if two or more players enter the room. So let me now break down each of this method. I guess we can skip the first method because I'm pretty sure you know how to place yellow tiles on the floor and move straight to the iron door. So right here under these two blocks, if I remove these two cobblestones, I have two blocks. The first one is a command block. The second one is a competitor. This command block will test for all players in this location. As you can imagine, this location is the location next to the NPC or seller. So if there is anyone in the radius of two of this coordinate, this block will fire. This will trigger the competitor and competitor will shut the door. So let's see what happens when a student enters the room. This command block will identify a player, trigger the competitor and competitor will shut the door. The actual place that the command block is testing for is actually right here. This is the, the counter in front of the NPC. If anyone is standing in the radius of two from this counter, the door will be shut. When the player leaves this radius, then there's nobody in the, in the area and the door is opened. There's one little trick with the iron door you need to make sure you do uh, to make this system work. Let me demonstrate what I mean. If you place the iron door, you will notice that there's no way I can enter the shop because this door is closed. So what you need to do instead is place the door sideways. So move a little bit to the left of the entrance and move the door a little bit to the side. So this way the door is open and when I enter the shop, the door will close. So make sure that you position yourself to the far left of the entrance and place the door um, on the left, this way, you can enter and exit. Now, let's have a look at the third method, which will teleport two more players to the prison. Third method is a little bit more complicated than the second method, but it's easy to set up once you have your head wrap around it. For this method, we will need two command blocks, one at the beginning and one at the end. We will need uh, one competitor and red stone. Let's have a look at what these command blocks do. This command block will test for all players in this location in the radius of two with count two. Count two basically means that once we have our first player, this will trigger the first redstone. You see there are particles there, which means this, this redstone is active because we have one player there. Uh, once this player leaves the area, this part is inactive, but once we have our first player, this will trigger the command. So far, nothing is happening because we need at least two players. Once we have two or more players, this will trigger the second redstone and this redstone in turn will trigger this command block. This command block in turn will teleport all the players next to the 
seller again these are the coordinates of the seller to this location facing this way and as you can imagine this location is the temporary prison so what happens is when we have one player then nothing happens but when we have two players this will trigger the teleport command and the two players will be teleported to the temporary prison today you learn how to limit a trading booth to one player either through an automatic iron door or through the teleport command in our next and final tutorial we're going to have a look at how to add money into the minecraft education edition Thank you for taking your time to check out this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time.